card that a lot of people had forgotten about until someone reminded them that, hey, these tokens that come into play are actually real. Meanwhile, Caleb's playing, oh, a man after my own heart, Grixis. Grixis with Lone Revenant as his primary kill, but also uh, multiple Karn Liberated. He, uh, he's sort of got a little bit of the, let's see, he's got lots of sweepers with whip flares, uh, slag storms. Now he's got a little bit actually of a uh, miracle touch though. He has temporal mastery uh, as his only miracle. It's kind of interesting to see temporal mastery here without any bonfires um, with just four ponders to set it up. Now he does have three lighthouses for extra shots at the miracles. Um, He's mostly a blue-red deck, and he's just splashing black for three Doom Blades and a go for the throat in order to give him, you know, a little bit of extra uh, spot removal. And he is playing Think Twice over Ravings because of his desire to hit those Temporal Masteries. Um, turn one, we have land for both people. Turn two, no play from anyone yet. Now, Eric's gonna, let's see, Eric's gonna have to... Wow, I mean, he's just going to basically play, you know, a thread at a time, thread at a time, thread at a time. Yeah. If he, he doesn't have any to begin with. It's interesting. I wonder what he kept to have no plays on turn one, two, or three. He's, have we going to see a hunt master here? Or he's waiting to not have mana leak wow. on turn four. Well, four mana. He is protected from a mana leak there. I wonder if this Grixis deck has any other answers to a creature. <laughs> I, it looks like Eric might have a grip full of Restoration Angels and no white mana. Now Caleb not casting um, the Lone Revenant in his hand yet, but uh, it could be coming down any time. Uh, I assume he's just going to wait till he hits his fifth land if he plays it at all. The uh, Blade Splicer coming down though, once again Eric playing around Mana Leak. Whip Flare in Caleb's hand. Whip Flare not the most effective. But at least it can, you know, it'll take down the 1-1 one, one and the look the at pillow. this. Player cards. I love those things. Absolutely. It's not actually clear that they're not going to come back sometime soon. I don't think they would appear in packs the same way they used to. But uh, with the proper distribution method, I think we might see a return to the player cards. Particularly. I hope so. Whip Flare. And it's a start. I mean, Whip Flare is definitely something. But uh, Eric does have a board presence. It'll be interesting to see how this play around Mana League strategy evolves now that he's a little behind on mana. I mean, is he really just not going to play as Huntmaster? I mean, Eric's been playing around mana like this your land destroyed by that every turn? No. Ah, uh, okay. There you go. And now we see it draws the mana link. But the hope is that the pod comes down next turn, playing around, you know? Like, giving him something to continue to advance his board. Caleb, meanwhile, gets his fifth land in play from Evol Evolving Wild. Now has access to all his colors, and uh, plenty of them. Basically any spell, any spell available. <laughs> the uh, sixth land comes down. It's interesting, I wonder, is he, would he want to just commit a Lone Revenant, or is he representing Snapcaster Mage. The Lone Revenant does come down. At this point, he probably figures, okay, whatever whatever Eric does, I'll just kill it and start impulsing. Now, Eric, no ways to actually directly fight the Lone Revenant. Does have access to things like uh, Acidic Slime, Geist Honor Monk, um, Huntmaster, you know, a variety of token making things so that he can actually get ahead. It's interesting that there's no bonfires, given how well bonfire works with Revenant. But I suppose Whip, Whip Flare and Slagstorm both do the trick as well. Alright, Eric surveying his options, looking at a, a group full of cards that do not deal with a lone Revenant. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan and I'm here with Patrick Chapin. What up? The one and only. Well, you can see Caleb Durward playing the Grixis control deck that he was playing at the Invitational um, only, what? Maybe uh, a week ago? Was it a Absolutely. week? Absolutely. And gosh, it feels like it was longer. Magic is going by so quickly now. His opponent, Nyapod, Eric Curtis. Doomblade. Now, Huntmaster is one throat less than he was. 
And that Lone Revenant cannot be targeted by any of Eric's spells, so it provides an excellent defender. It's really interesting to see how Temporal Mastery can early on work as an explorer or two for, uh, for setting up the Revenant, but then later, if he ever gets through, he can go hit you, take an extra turn, hit you, take, you know. It's pretty insane when it gets to that point. Plus, just if you play against a match that doesn't have any counter magic, I mean, it's easy to get up to seven. You just do it. Here's the pod. A mana leak. Now he'll pay, but he won't be able to use it this turn. This gives Caleb an opportunity. Previously, he was running one Ancient Grudge. Does he still have that main? Uh, he does not. Okay. Well, just delaying it is helpful, though. Absolutely. Plus, if he can kill one of those two guys, like, you know, if he attacks, if he attacks with the Revenant here, Beric double blocks, he could kill one. And then kill the other as a result. Exactly. But if Eric doesn't block, he'll just take an extra turn and put him in the same situation, only worse next turn. There you go, and there's the block. Oh, so now I think we're going to see Temporal Mastery. Now that he's committed to not killing it. Mastery. Now Mastery does remove itself. No shenanigans with Mastery. Well, I think by definition these are kind of shenanigans, <laughs> but none of the Snapcaster action. It's well, hard for Temporal Mastery to not be considered shenanigans. <laughs> I mean, taking an extra turn... I think seven mana is a fair cost. Well, if you pay seven. <laughs> I believe that's what I said. <laughs> in with the Revenant. If you've never been hit by a Revenant and constructed, I have to tell you, it's a horrible feeling. I gotta imagine Eric blocks here. The impulse is just too good. Impulse can stop whatever he's doing. I think he's gonna keep his creature around for a weak tutor which I don't know how effective Ooh. it's going to be because Caleb has so much removal in his deck. No, this is, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. If there is one thing I know, it is that you do not want to be hit by Lone Revenant. And then we see a lighthouse enter the uh, Caleb side of the board. Back to Eric. Eric right now with that uh, birthing pod he can make a one from his golem. And see, Caleb, off of the impulse, drew a slag storm. Yep. And he doesn't even blow it on the golem. He doesn't have to. Why would he? Right. Now things are just going to get worse for Eric. Because no matter what he plays now, it's just, you know, for the most part, it's just dying to the, to the slag storm. Uh, Borderland Ranger can become a four. The fours of notes, are there any? Uh, there's no metamorph. There is only Restoration Angel and Huntmaster. Well, Restoration Angel actually um, is a very big body. It's not I quite big it, enough to beat the Angel. I mean, to beat the Revenant. I though. bet he's going to get a Huntmaster though. Even though he's seen a, uh, a Whip Flare, I think he'll probably end up getting that Huntmaster. He's looking at the Angels for a second. He paused on an Angel. Oh, not quite enough. You need five. You only get four. And he does. There's the Huntmaster. Now he's going to get hit by that Slag Storm. If he would have just... You got me. If he would have just chumped... No, no, no. no. Oh, if he would have blocked, yeah. If he would have chumped and not let, let Caleb have the Slag Storm. Now, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that just by seeing the existence of that Whip Flare, that you do not get the Huntmaster. I think that you you get the angel. But on the other hand, you have also already seen a Doom Blade, so which one are you going well, no, to go to? I think he has to get the Huntmaster figuring he needs to block this turn. If he gets the angel, all he's going to do with it is block. If he gets the Huntmaster, at least he can That's hope fair. to block with the wolf. We see an activation of the lighthouse from Caleb. Also problematic. And here's the Slag Storm. Caleb's a very strong deck builder who's been doing a lot of a lot of sweet brewing, a lot of sweet things over the last year and a half. There's the slag storm. Goodbye, Eric's this is creatures. Probably curtains. And do you remember when an Ophidian would hit? This yeah. is so much better than an Ophidian hitting. Oh yeah. I mean. Oh yeah. This is definitely one of those spots too where Eric is feeling the the, the lack of bonfire. <laughs> he does have him in the board though. Do you think you'll bring him in? I mean, this isn't the matchup you want to I don't know most. that I like him, honestly. Um, he might not have very many ways to handle a lone revenant, but bonfire is a very conditional way. Yeah.
he does have access to a variety of uh, additional threats in his board, though. He's got uh, Hero of Bladehold and Wolfier Silverheart, as well as Italia, just in case in case he just wants more guys, you know. Uh, he does have plenty of reasonable cards to take out, though, like Dismember and uh, in some of these creatures like Near Hearth Pilgrim or Fiend Hunter. I could see him bringing in the bonfire if only because he just has a lack of he has enough bad cards in his main deck that he's got to put something in. Right, right. But I bet you that there are enough cards he would bring in that that that's not necessarily going to be the path. I mean, the Wolf or Silverheart is certainly a card to think about. Yep, he'll bring in the two Silverhearts and the two Heroes for sure. Yeah. So Restoration Angel taking this opportunity to sneak in while Caleb. Uh, Taps for a lighthouse. It's interesting that he played the uh, the Restoration Angel on his own end step in response to the lighthouse tapping out, instead of just playing the angel on his main phase and sacking it to pod immediately. Getting a five, perhaps getting a, a Geist, Geist under monk. monk. Yeah, <clears throat> weird. I almost wonder if this is Fancy Pants Syndrome. It happens to the best of us. The danger of cool plays. So what does Eric need to do to turn this around? I mean, honestly, if he were to tutor the top of his deck, it would need to be combinations of Restoration Angel and Geist, I think. Now, he's playing with Geist Downer Monk, Zealous Conscript, and Acidic Slime at, at the 5 oh, spot. Oh my god, hard cast Temporal Mastery. Well, so he doesn't have any 6s in his pod deck. No 6s. His chain stops at 5. This stops at Geist Downer Monk. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> and Eric just takes it. I mean, I think as terrible as it is, Ugh. Yeah, I've only been playing Revenant in uh, block constructed thus far, but it's so absurd. And are we going to see the finish out with a bonfire or something like that? Karn. Oh, seven mana tapped. Caleb with no bonfires in his deck, to be clear. Karn eating up the birthing pod. He just wants to neutralize any counterplay he can. He doesn't care if the Restoration Angel attacks and kills Karn, so what? He just doesn't want things to get crazy, like Eric to drop, uh, you know, a Titan and then sacrifice it and turn it into Elishnorn or... Oh, Doomblade. Scoop. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, All right, so, wow. as we go to the sideboard, Caleb has Torpor Orb. Wow. Which is a very potent weapon against Eric, and yeah. it's not clear Eric's even going to be able to anticipate it. I mean, one of the things about Torpor Orb is that making the creatures lose come to play abilities, so many of these creatures in a pod deck, the whole point is coming into play abilities. That's yes. the entire reason you're even playing the deck. Uh, go for the Throat, another nice option too, particularly since he's seen both Huntmaster and Restoration Angel. Um... Consecrated Sphinx, another absolutely fantastic card in this matchup. I mean, the very worst that can happen is that your opponent can copy the Consecrated Sphinx, but you're the one with Doom Blades. And then uh, he might even bring in Pillar of Flame. I mean, he doesn't know that his opponent only has one Strangle Root Geist, but either way, Pillar is nice to use on the mana creatures. And uh, meanwhile, Wow, I'm going to pause you for a second. Yeah? Caleb has one Mind Slaver. Yeah, not the matchup for it, but that's a spicy yeah, little I'm meatball. Yeah, I just wanted to point out some spice. That Absolutely. Is, that is... Uh... And you can tell he's been talking with Reed Duke, because he has a Volition <laughs> Reigns. I'm a big fan of Volition Reigns. I know that in right now, all of my control decks, I do run one Volition Reigns. I know Shaheen Sarani runs one Volition Reigns in his control deck. It's just a very good kind of catch-all to the various things that can happen in kind of the slow-end matchups, whether that's a Wolf Run list or another blue-based control deck like typically Esper. Eric rocking, uh, as we said, not a whole ton. He's probably going to bring in the Heroes and the Wolf or Silverhearts. If he correctly anticipates Torp Orb, he, uh, he might want to bring in a, uh, a, an Ancient Grudge. But... Um, 
there's a good chance. I mean, and he's got another Talia too, but there's yeah. a good chance he's going to walk face first into it. Well, one of the things about Talia I like is that you're talking about an opponent whose deck is primarily spells. On the other hand, you've also seen main deck Whip Flare, main deck Slag Storm. So if the early um, aggression is weathered, Thalia just sets you up to be really, really hit. On the left, Caleb Durward. On the right, Eric Curtis. Caleb, up a game here. This is round five of 10 for the Star City Games Open Series, live here in Detroit. Detroit, Michigan, one of my favorite places, actually. Absolutely. Beautiful city, excellent scene. <laughs> Eric's going to be on the play. What is he hoping to draw? I mean, Eric really wants to start out with fast mana, regardless of the fact that Caleb has whip flares, regardless of the fact that Caleb has um, the slag storm. He wants to have fast mana, drop a pod into play, and then ramp that pod into his other powerful cards. He probably particularly wants to see Hero of Bladehold come out, because Hero is resistant to the sweep, and then provides its own single card army. Absolutely. Particularly since he hasn't seen Slagstorm. Oh, no, he did see Slagstorm. Yeah, yeah, he did see Slagstorm. He's seen both. I mean, it doesn't even matter if uh, Caleb slags or whips to get rid of the army that the uh, the hero would create. The fact that it created it means that damage happened, and then it can just rebuild and do it all over again. So i got to say, on the surface, I like the look of this matchup for uh, Caleb, and not oh, just because absolutely. he's playing Grixis. The, uh, having... Having the sweepers, having a nice end game that uh, is from a different angle than than Eric is prepared for, and uh, and plus just you know card advantage and removal with uh, a good end game is a good plan against these mid rangey decks. I mean, Eric's deck is not particularly fast. They're still sideboarding. Are there, there any mulligans? I don't know. If, okay. I, if I'm playing Grixis, I think in this spot, I'm just going to keep doing more of the same. I mean, I might even think about taking out Temporal Mastery, as sweet as it was game one. Just because in the games where you're winning, it might be that that's not what's really relevant, you know? Although it might just be too important a, a part of his engine. You know, I keep on finding myself wondering about Temporal Mastery. I, I've had it in decks as I was brewing for, um, for this time, for the, since it's been printed. And ultimately, in every brew that I've had Temporal Mastery in, I've cut it. Hmm. And uh, you, you're not a big fan of the just mastering for value? Eric down to six cards here. But one of the things, I mean, mastery, it seems awesome as the means to um, acquire a kind of explore or rampant growth style effect from blue. But if you don't, there are so many times where you have that miracle moment but you just don't want to use it and because it's just not good enough. You know, like you, you needed hmm. something else to happen. So we see another mulligan or, or are we still Eric on the is, first? Eric is down to six. He's just doing his first. Oh, he is down to five. Now he's down to five. Yikes. Caleb patiently. Yep, yep. Furrowing his brow, waiting to finish game two. I think he feels confident in this matchup, and I, I think that there's every reason that he should. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Patrick Chapin, and we're watching round four of the Star City Games Open Series here in Detroit. 
Caleb on the left with Grixis Control, Eric on the right with Nyapod. Eric down to five cards now. Particularly against a deck with point removal, in the form of Doom Blades, in the form of Pillar of Flame, combined with Sweep in the form of Slagstorm and Pillar of Flame, Eric is looking to be in a pretty rough position. Eric is on the play, and turn one, go. I think one of the things we said before is he wanted most likely to have a draw where it was mana creature early turn two pod, and that is not gonna happen today. Caleb Durward with Ponder. Wow, without a mana, without a mana accelerator, it's, uh, I mean, I guess it's really, just kind of hope you can curve out, right? And hope that, uh, hope that Caleb stumbles. Wow, it looks like Caleb even has a good mix of spells, too. I kind of got a read on the future. I would not be surprised if this is Caleb's tournament. I, got, I see him already just zooming, rocketing to the top eight. You know, like it's only round four, there's six more rounds, but I got a good feeling about Caleb today. Well, like what is the reason that Esper is so good against the uh, Delver builds? You see the Doom Blades, right? You see the ability to put something on the table that matters. And I think Lone Revenant does some of that same stuff. Come, you've got that sweep, you've got the t targeted removal, you've got the ability to pull ahead with Lone Revenant. I, I think you could be right. There could be something here where Caleb makes that top eight. I love the number of Doom Blades and go for the throats he has. I like the uh, the uh, modest amount of card advantage, the, the mix of sweepers. Snapcaster Ponder from Caleb. Eric stuck on two lands. Dude. Caleb's deck, I don't know if I could... Like, this is enough to almost get me to want to come back over from the dark side. <laughs> God, this looks so fun. Even with the miracles, I don't like to think twice, but uh, that's my only only little complaint about the deck for the most part. In with the Snapcaster Mage. Thalia sitting out there on the other side. And uh, we have... Desolate Lighthouse at the end of the turn. I bet you we're going to see a Pillar of Flame kill Thalia. Not just tap out for Revenant? Wow. Oh, wow. He's like, uh, block? Okay. Perfect. Revenant. God. That was amazing. Wow. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Caleb sacrificing his Snapcaster Mage, tricking Eric into killing it for him so that his Revenant would be powered up. Pretty close to a non-game here. At this point, Caleb has removal, permission. He's about to start impulsing every turn. Pillars now away comes the Thalia. Pillar. Yep. Without Thalia, Eric doesn't even have a blocker this turn. It's and just going to get it, worse. This is just over. I mean, I don't. I cannot imagine any set of cards that Eric could do that would bring him out of this. Remember, John Cena said, "Never give up." <laughs> Reed Duke doesn't concede either. You ever seen that? Oh, I'm not. I wouldn't concede were I Eric, but uh, I I don't see a rational uh, way out of this one here. We got a cavern. It's a good start. Between Borderland. You, between you and me, I saw I saw Reed concede before. He <laughs> likes to pretend he'd never concede. We've played some miracle games where he's just getting ground out, and he's just so far behind. Caleb discards a mana leak to the lighthouse. Cavern on humans. A shocking change. Right. From the status quo. And Caleb chucking for a miracle. He doesn't need miracles, but he's happy to have them. So are we going to see the Borderland Ranger bite it? I think so. I think we're in the super Ophidian phase of the game, where every little thing you do will just get undone at an effective cost to the person playing it of no cards. Absolutely. This is an awesome deck by Caleb. I hope he wins the whole thing, but I got him at the very least making top eight. And the orb. As if things weren't bad enough. Another nail in the coffin for Eric Curtis. So what are we, uh, I mean, what is the plan, I guess? Throw out a blocker? I guess all he really has is throwing out blockers and hoping that somehow the Caleb can't kill them despite impulsing every turn. <laughs> right. 
Hmm. I mean, again, it's the classic Ophidian lock. Like, if you were losing before, it's not getting better for you. Yep. Human. Huntmaster. Now, even though the Huntmaster doesn't give him a wolf for life when he comes into play, he does still trigger every time he flips. That's fair. And Lighthouse. Two mana leaks, one goes away. The fact that he wasn't willing to use a mana leak on the Huntmaster. Oh no, the cavern's on cavern, human anyway. Cavern yeah, on human. Yeah. You're only human, it, all, it always happens, okay. We've got another land from Caleb. Another mana leak in Caleb's hand. Only human, huh? I assure you, my uh, my PR people will definitely confirm that. I am definitely a human. <laughs> Caleb, deciding which way to kill the Huntmaster. That's the way I choose. Removes in his throat. For four. I wonder if Caleb will find another good spell. Is that a ponder? Only barely. Wow. Doesn't even want the ponder. He takes the, the land. He's, land. he's good. <laughs> eh, it's locked up. He doesn't want anything else. He's got everything he needs. And going for the kill now. Eight damage. Six life from his opponent. Next turn, he can kill Eric. Yeah, he doesn't want to wait and give Eric a chance to bonfire. He doesn't know Eric doesn't have any bonfires. But he might have ordered one in. I think this is a Rizzy. Wrap it up. There's a 4-4. Four, four. The Silverheart. No friend, Silverheart. Okay, what does that do? Let's be extra sure. This is just a 4-4, four, four, right? <laughs> he tosses it to the side. <laughs> There is theoretically a Wilfier Silverheart in play. It just got tossed aside for a moment. Caleb demonstrating a shocking amount of frustration with having two Lone Revenants, a dominating board, being up a game, up lots of cards, Torpor Orb, every kind of answer in his hand, permission, work card draw, and the game one turn away from victory. Eric, meanwhile, content to uh, just chill, hang out. <laughs> Okay, as we wait for something, something. What are the matches you open to see today? You know what? I do not believe that there exists a red deck that's aggressive, that's good. But I really hope someone proves me wrong. Oh, yeah. It would definitely be sweet if there's somebody just showing up with... Plus, I think that red, aggressive red decks are about to get a serious, serious <laughs> jolt in the arm. I, I almost agree. I, I think you almost agree? I think that mid rangey red decks are getting the jolt and aggressive red is is gonna be what it is. So the card we're talking about I mean there's a variety of sweet cards coming up, like a new incinerate, an arc lightning, I mean there's a lot of sweet stuff it's but the response for the beacon of destruction, the new beacon. Beacon of destruction. I don't think that beacon of destruction is gonna be the card that most people compare <laughs> Thunder Maw Hellcat. No, they're to. gonna go with um Rorix or Bane Slayer uh, Angel. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's kind of a the the love child of Rorix Bladewing and Bane Slayer Angel. <laughs> five five flying haste. When he comes into play, ruin your opponent's flying creatures. So I think that what's happening is that uh, Torpor Orb's interaction with Wolfier Silverheart. I think one of the questions that's being asked is, does Wolfier Silverheart trigger when someone when another creature is cast by that player? Yep. And uh, believe it or not, Caleb is not the type of guy who just throws his opponent's cards off to the side. He was probably throwing it into the loving arms of a judge. They both appear to be looking in that direction. I mean, he's not, he's not a barbarian. He's not going to take somebody's uh, counter off of their creature like uh, Jerry Thompson did to put it on his own ratchet bomb. Now, I do think that... Uh, well, he may no, be no barbarian, 
You can tell from the uh, the change in the uh, the grooming of his beard that he has seen a barber. <laughs> what do you think about the recent trend of magic players with beards? There seems to be a lot. No, I'm, like, I, I'm no, I'm just you know, like 15 years ago, there weren't enough magic players old enough to have beards. <laughs> um. You know, it's funny that you say that. I'm, I'm trying to think of magic players from the back in the day that had beards, and I can't come up with any. Eric Taylor? Eric Taylor. That's the man who had a beard in the early 80s. <laughs> Eric Taylor, famous for many things, but one of the most famous for eating his own hat when Kai Buda won yet another Pro Tour. I forget who that bet was against, but... Was that bet against... It wasn't even against anybody. It was a public statement. Oh, yeah. It was to the community Easily. at large. That's sort right. of a, You know, it was just in response to... It was in response to Randy Bueller's statement about, you know, at what point do we say Kai's the best? Right, right. And Randy said, well, if he wins the next one. And Eric said, if he wins the next one, I'm eating my hat. Okay, so the attack happens. Eric blocks. Eric goes to two and an image. Oh... So there's still two lone revenants in play. And I think what Caleb really wanted to know is if he phantasmal imaged Eric's Silverheart, could he buff his own revenant? Ah. Which would be a fantastic play. Sounds like the ruling has come back correct. Blade Splicer. And Eric packs it in. Caleb advances 2-0. To be up 4-0 in the SCG Detroit. This is Patrick Chapin with the Corrupter, Adrian Sullivan. <laughs> oh, blasts from the past. 